Hey everybody, Andrew here from Pacific Coast Auto, taking a look at the results of last week's auction picks. The Suzuki Wagon R RR R grade set a record last week for being the cheapest car we've ever had sell that we picked for the video. It sold for $30. There's no missing zeros, it really sold for $30. The Lancia Tama went unsold and it was only bid up to $1,080. Well under Derek's guess. Seemed like nobody wanted to buy an ATV last week. That one was not only unsold, it received no bids. The Town Ice Wagon did find a buyer and it went for just $910. The Toyota Crown Royal Saloon with the cool fender mirrors was unsold even though it was bid up to $2,080. And the MR2 G Limited was also unsold for just 10 bucks more than that one at $2,090. The BMW 7 Series did sell going for well over Derek's guess. It brought in $14,260. The Mercedes camper wagon that may have been an ambulance at some point in its life went unsold with a high bid of $6,700. And finally, the Sunny truck found a new home. It went for just over Derek's guess at $3,450. That's going to do it for last week's picks. Now here's Derek to go over this week's. Hey guys, Derek here. Going to run you through the auction picks coming up this week at the auctions here in Japan. Now this week we're gonna do it a little bit differently. We're gonna switch up the way that we do it. You guys let me know what you think of it. I think this is a system that works better for us in the office because we're terribly busy and it's, it's quite difficult for us to get together the information that we need for this. And so here's the major change is my picks and Andrew's picks are not going to be present here. And instead we're picking all Facebook picks from you guys. And I think this system is going to work better because it gives more people a chance to get their cars featured on here and with the amount of picks that you guys are giving us from Facebook we're getting so many to choose from so it makes it easier for us to pick which ones previously it would always come down to you know here are 10 cars I like and then I can only pick three of these and so I was uh, not showing plenty of good cars. Here's another point before we get into this one too is last week there was a phenomenally special vehicle that someone I can't remember posted up there. It was an NSX Type R of which they only made like 500 of them or something and they never come up for sale either privately or at auctions and one came up last week and I didn't even notice it there. It just looked like another NSX taking a look at the picture. Uh, several NSXs get uh, modified to look like the NSX R, but an actual authentic one did come up for auction and I missed it and I cried myself to sleep that night and it was a terrible sleep. And so what I recommend that people do is if you're picking an awesome car and several of you guys did this this week, but if you're picking an awesome car and has something special or something that might be checked, maybe low mileage or something, mention it in the comments there like check out this one. It has a Sylvia front end on a Mustang or or whatever um, and then it makes it easier for me to pick those ones out specifically okay so let's jump into this one and we're starting off with our thumbnail vehicle here sent in uh, from Corp Q is the name that came up on Facebook and uh, I, I hope I've pronounced that right he sent in this one here which is a Lexus RCF this one is at auction tomorrow the RCF is kind of like the Lexus two-door version of the GS class. It's a new class from this generation, and it's a two-door, kind of medium to large size uh, grand touring car. The F version gives you lots of with a five liter V8 here. I think that puts, up, puts out just north of 450 horsepower, maybe? Oh, when, where, where's the, uh, the Wikipedia when you need it? And so this one is a 2015 with just under 7,000 kilometers on it. Auction grade five with an interior A. So really high grade and it has a lot of stuff. But take a look at this, Tom's suspension. And if you don't know Tom's, they're a Toyota only uh, manufacturer of aftermarket parts. They are actually affiliated with Toyota and do in-house stuff. Uh, what else, Tom's stainless, titanium exhaust, various other Tom's parts that were installed by the dealer, original navigation, back camera, digital TV, Tom's aero parts, and they are pretty uh, significant by the look of it. And official Tom's parts for the RCF version of the car, probably going to be very difficult to find in 15 or 20 years time. And so, it is cool to be able to buy those when they're brand new and have something unique. 
Uh, front diffuser, rear bump, what? So small, hard to read. Rear bumper fins, side diffusers, trunk lid spoiler, rear bumper uh, diffuser on it. So a bunch of different Tom's pieces on the car. It looks pretty awesome. The body is basically perfect. And this is original orange. This is the way that the car came from the factory. It looks, um, or at least from the showroom floor. Perhaps some of these were dealer installed. I don't really know if this version of the car uh, came direct from Toyota this way. But it's called the RCF Carbon Exterior Package. There you have it. It's a version of the car I, I never knew existed, but definitely is going to be eye-catching. The interior is a little bit weird with the orange in there, but it might work in person better than it does in the pictures. And uh, perfect condition, basically. The I guess the problem with picking a vehicle like this is that I have no clue what it's going to sell for. Starting price is 5 million yen, so you're already at a pretty high price there. I believe that it's going to be a good chunk more than that. Uh, probably... Huh, how much does the RCF sell for regularly? And then you tack on the little bit that the uh, carbon exterior package is going to add to the value and then subtract the uh, depreciation from the 7,000 kilometers in the last two years. Okay, uh, 5.8 million is my guess for this one. On to the next one from Jake Mello. All right, and so this one's been at auction for three times. Tomorrow will be the third time. We bid it on, on it last week, and so I can cheat a little bit with the prices on this one. And so what we have here is a Renault 5 Turbo 2. Now the 2 is important. The 2 is the one that's worth less money. The Turbo is worth more. That's the real racing car. The Turbo 2 is the one that got a little bit cheaper parts here and there, but they still tend to be pretty expensive. It's like the Renault Clio, but the car that came before it. And so you do get the engine, it's a turbocharged four-cylinder 1.4 liter that goes into the back here. And so it's a hatchback that wasn't ever supposed to have an engine in the back. And then they put the engine in the back because it's a race car and because it's a French race car and they do some of the coolest stuff ever. If only some of that would wear off a Nissan and we would get an S16 model with an engine. <laughs> Well, an engine in the front would be best, but an S16 with the engine in the rear, that way we would know for a fact that the Frenchness is wearing off on them. Okay, so this is a 1989. I guess uh, this was imported because it has an imported number plate, or uh, not number plate, VIN number on it. The original VIN number is here, 923, and so it was the 923rd model. Now this one is in terrible, terrible, terrible condition. That's what R2 means. It means it's so bad, even looking at it is going to burn your eyes. Now it looks good in the pictures here, but if you look at it up close, it has rust on basically everything. And what's, I, I, I guess it's a bit of a problem having rust on everything, even though a lot of these panels are made out of fiberglass. We have fiberglass hood, fiberglass fender, fiberglass rear fender, steel doors, and steel roof and pillars here. The real body of the R5 is underneath all of that fiberglass, and it's like a Swiss cheese body. And still, look at this, it starts at 1.75. Yikes! So it says here this comment, and this is typical of an R grade or a 2 grade, not R grade, R2 grade or a 2 grade. It says plenty of corrosion holes in various areas. Yikes! Then accident damage here, that's why I got an R. These are the notes for the accident. Aftermarket sunroof is going to lower the value of the car because you want this to be more on the original side to retain its value. Lots of cracks in the back here. Uh, what else? Peeling paint, A3 scratches on the front. Hood duct is peeling. It's pretty easy to restore these as far as classic Group B rally cars go, and so that's good. And if you restore them, they can go up in value to somewhere in the $100,000 range sometimes more depending on the rarity of it. The Turbo Ones tend to be more than the Turbo Twos, like I said. Color change to yellow, that'll lower the, the price of it too. And all those stickers, stickers usually fade over time and have to come off and damage the paint underneath in some cases. So last week, the highest bid on this one was 2.845 and it went unsold. 
So they want more than that. I think that the seller for this is going to want 3 million yen. So my guess is going to be 3 million yen with a high chance of it going unsold again. And they'll just wait until somebody pays that much. We've bought, I think, three or four of these in the past. And I can tell you that based on the condition of this one, what it says here in the auction sheet, that's too much for this. I don't think it's worth more than 2.5. Okay, on to the next one. Uh, that was Jake Mello. He picked another one, Jake Mello, uh, this next one here. And Timothy Gallahan, both of you guys picked this one. This is my favorite pick of the week. So this is amazing <laughs> with pink seats uh, more on that later but what we have here is what's called a suzuki mighty boy and the mighty boy is a k class car and everyone who watches these videos knows that i like car slash pickups we drive one for the company car i love nissan sunny trucks I love El Caminos, and I love those weird Australian cars that have a car and a truck in the back. They're cool, too. This one's special, though, because they made the front end look like a Hakoska Skyline. It has aftermarket body kit, front, side, and rear. But the headlight conversion to look like a Hakoska Skyline is so cool. And the, the hood scoop on there, offset to the side with old-style hood scoop, that's unique and that's incredibly cool. I like the roof racks and I like how they come down here to the bed rails. And, you know, small pickup truck, this would be a very funny vehicle to look at because it's way smaller in real life than it looks like in these pictures. Think about like, um, what cars does everyone know that's a K-class car? I don't know, the, like the K-Class vans are as big as the K-Class gets. This is even smaller than that. This is about the same size as the AutoZam AZ1 that we had on the channel a little bit ago. Pretty cool, pretty unique. Could probably go for some different wheels, in my opinion. Oh, we can read the size. 155, 55 R14. And then we have here, turbocharged intercooled engine engine size on this one is a 550 cc probably the same engine from the alto works an f5a engine and that intercooler is about the same size as a tetra pack of juice i wonder how much good that it does but i guess for a small engine you need a small intercooler or you're going to be wasting all your pressure filling up that intercooler okay so uh yeah let's have a look let's have a look at the best part of these truck things you can't put much in the back, but just the idea of having it is very cool. And it looks like you can sit on the tailgate. Okay, interior has gauges put into the dashboard, which is a bit of a shame, to be honest, because these dashboards are going to be hard to find. Looks like the seats have been re relined. I think. Could be aftermarket, could be relined seats. I'm not too familiar with these. The floor mat is from Moon Eyes, which is a uh, it's like historical Japanese car sh car show and and uh, shop and stuff like that. Big tachometer with a uh, a change gears light. Could probably do with a little bit of tweaking to the interior. I don't know if I would be down with this pink interior. Okay, an auction sheet. It says it's a modified car. So check yourself. It doesn't actually say check your stuff. It just says it's a modified car. First time at auction, auction grade 3.5, interior C, exterior B, turbo engine, just like everybody wants. But the mileage is unknown on this one because it's uh, only four digit odometer. And it says the gauges actually don't work here. That's a shame. Okay, core support has been modified. Uh, inner panel co caulking is cracked. It's a little bit weird. End panel has been modified, uh, and it has various modifications. Condition looks good. Look, not very many notes here. It says interior cigarette burn, dirty wear, and uh, windshield has rock chips on it. Only one scratch on the body, so this is kind of show car-like, I guess. Body's fantastic. Interior looks pretty good. Overall condition is good. Mileage is unknown, but, you know, sometimes you have to go with mileage unknown cars, especially when something like this comes up, and it's going to be your only chance 
in your entire life to get a Hakoska front end Mighty Boy. And I didn't mention it, but the name of the car is so cool. And yeah, just that. Oh, it's 1985. I didn't mention the year of it. So kind of on the old side, but uh, yeah, very cool, I think. Price on this one, I'm going to guess. Uh, I would pro like. I would probably pay about six hundred thousand for this. I don't know if that's how much the seller wants, or I don't know if that's how much the market wants for it. But I would pay that much. So that's going to be my guess on it. Six hundred thousand yen for that mighty boy. Okay, on to the next one from Thomas McCoy. This is something amazing. And poo poo and USS for being a, a stupid head and giving us the small pictures. It is their fault. They don't want to give this data to the third party uh, sites that sell the data to make it easier for people to buy from the auctions that they're trying to sell from. Just doesn't make sense to me. Anyways, what's cool about this, Mark III Supras, I find them to be about a seven out of six, seven out of 10 in terms of the car. I like them and I, I don't love them. I love Toyota. I find them to be a little bit on the big side for me but it does come with a 1JZ engine. That's a 2.5 twin turbo engine, puts out 280 horsepower. This is 1992, so it can be imported to the USA. And look at this, 4,372 original kilometers on the car. That's not gauges change, that is the authentic real kilometers on the car, the real kilometerage on the car. Auction grade 4.5 with interior B, near perfect body, seat dirty, Door mirror scratched, very scratches and dents, underside has been painted. Very close to a perfect car. It says the AC doesn't work here. The seller said that probably the condenser, he says, is, is not working well. Bilstein suspension, Momo. Oh, original Bilstein suspension, original Momo steering wheel, and original front Recaro seats. Wow, this is like a time capsule. This is the car that you buy. And then you say to Toyota in America, hey, you want to buy this? It's better than any of the other cars that you've ever seen in your entire life. And it has a 1J in it. And so it's going to be a lot of money for this one. Um, with a car like this, uh, I asked Andrew, my go-to guy for asking prices. He said $3 million. I don't know. My initial, like, I've seen Supras like this go for over 2 million, but it's very, very uncommon. But this amount of mileage and this condition is extremely uncommon. This could be the best one left in the world. That's, that's how much I, I have, uh, uh, I feel about this car, I guess. Could be over 3 million if some, if a couple people just have to have this car. So I think I'm going to stick with the same as Andrew. And that way there's no competition. So, three million on this one. Be interested to see what happens with that. On to the next one from Bill Courtney, who said, I'm not going to do this week because I got work to do, but then he did it anyway. And uh, so Bill Courtney sent in a few. He does every week. Thank you, Bill. And uh, I figured I'd put this one up because we don't do too many EK9 Civic Type Rs. They are fantastic little cars. I haven't had a chance to ever drive one yet, and it is... Uh, it's difficult for me to handle that. So this is a 1998 Civic Type R E K9. So it's a 1600 cc. I think the engine puts out like 170-ish horsepower. I think it's more horsepower than the uh, uh, capacity of it. And so 1600 should be more than 160 horsepower, maybe 170, 180, somewhere in that range. So someone in the comments let me know. We haven't bought one. I don't know. We've bought a number of the uh, DC2 Integra Type R, which is less money than the Civic. Kind of a faster car, I guess. It has more power out of the 1.8 liter engine, but the Civic might be a faster car overall if you're looking at like street, um, street or racetrack because it's a light, light body there. Auction rate four and interior B and exterior B and 73,000 kilometers makes this one of the better ones. It's hard to find these in good condition. A lot of people race them here in Japan. They're very suited to uh, classes that require 1600 cc and front wheel drive. There aren't an awful lot of cars that are high performing in that class. And so the prices for these tend to be high, typically over a million yen still. Aftermarket exhaust, aftermarket Navi, and uh, digital TV tuner. End panel has been dented. Uh, headlights are cloudy. 
You can see it a little bit in the picture. Steering wheel peeling, engine room has surface rust and corrosion in it, and uh, winter tires on the car of all things. And I love these wheels, and I'm trying to convince my wife that for Christmas, she should get me a set of Civic Type R wheels for my minivan, because I think that they would suit the car pretty well. Not these ones though, I want to get the ones, uh, the 18 inch ones that come on like the, shoot, which generation is that? I don't know. E, B, C, D, E, F, F, D, 2, is it? The one that came after this one. Anyways, the front bumper lip is cracked, an A4, and so that lip needs to be uh, restored, but the rest of the car looks to be in good condition. And I'm gonna guess on this one, uh, one it starts at 1.1, 1 .1, so I'm gonna guess 1.4, Four five million yen on this one. Thank you, Bill. On to Benjamin Carrasco. Whoa, my gosh, Benjamin Carrasco. All right, and I picked this one, Benjamin, because we have not had an Avant time, and I have a little bit of a famous time on YouTube where I said I don't know what this car is. I think it's maybe a Renault Espace or something, but it was an Avant time. And I didn't know. And if you don't know something and you're on YouTube, then you're going to be shouted at by everyone. Because nobody goes to read the comments. They just say, oh, somebody made a mistake. I'm going to go to that box and I'm going to tell them right now. And I had probably like about 40 people say, oh, you don't know anything because you don't know that this is uh, an oven time. I mean, we, we, we don't have these in, in Canada, obviously. Only like 1,500 or 2,000 of them were ever sold because it's like the European version of the Pontiac Aztec in terms of ugliness. But I have to say, I quite like this vehicle. And I maybe should get one as my next company car if they'll sell for cheap enough price. 3,000 cc, I think they're front wheel drive. This is an auxiliary 4.5B, 63,379 kilometers. Comes with current registration. You can see the plate on there. Condition seems to be pretty good. Uh, what else? Uh, sun visor is cracked. Dashboard has holes for modification. Really? Uh, maybe this area here? It just looks so futuristic and weird. I love it. And I love how you get a full window opened here from the front to the back. I guess you could call it a hard top. And this looks like windows on the top. Very cool. Driver's seat wear, rear board modified. Blah, 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 perfect body. Hmm, maybe 250,000, no, that sounds expensive. Hmm, 200,000 yen on this one. Okay, and uh, next one, Sean William Bellamy, another person who sends in plenty of them every week, so thank you, Sean. I picked this one because I figure it's a little bit boring. Boring for me, not necessarily boring for other people because you don't live in Japan, you don't see a million of these on the road, but this is a common car that people drive here. This is called a Toyota Wish, and Octagon 3.5, interior B, exterior B, 113, 559 kilometers, and uh, let's see, body condition looks to be pretty good, some paint peeling, but it doesn't say where, I hate it when they do that. I hate it. Usually it's on the plastic bits, like the rear spoiler or the uh, mirrors, or this one has extensions on the fenders here that are made out of plastic. Usually plastic parts peel before metal parts do. Okay, just a typical mid-size uh, minivan. How many seats are in this? Six-seater, it looks like. I think it's a three-row. It has to be three-row. Yeah, because only two seats in the front, so... Three rows. Interior looks normal. Exterior looks normal. To someone who doesn't have these in your market, this can be a really cool vehicle, especially minivans or these kind of like wagon plus. It's kind of like a smaller than a typical minivan in most markets, but in Japan it's like a Japanese sized minivan. It can be a really cool vehicle if lowered with body kits, that sort of thing. I really like them. Comes with a sunroof. What engine do we got in this? 2000 cc this one's two-wheel drive most vehicles like this come optional with four-wheel drive if you want it and uh, they're really 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 cheap this one's a 2004 and i expect this one to sell for about uh, 100,000 yen for this one so it's less than a thousand bucks for a good running will last you forever minivan that has angry eyes Okay, next one, Sean William Bellamy, another one here for you, and you found, wow, the biggest pictures in the world. 
of a JZA80 Supra. Still, to this day, one of the best looking and best performing cars that came from Japan. Obviously, this is the car that everybody compares to the Skyline GTR as the two big daddies of the JDM 90s cars. And I know that uh, both the GTR and the Supra continue being made into the 2000s here in Japan, not in the USA. Obviously, they didn't have the Skyline in the USA, but this one here in the USA stopped, I think, in 1998 or so, but I think here in Japan it continued on until 2001 or 2002. And so these are uh, hugely going up in price. You used to be able to get them for like under a million yen for a pretty decent twin turbo version of it. Now they're, a lot of them are over two million. So pretty crazy. Aftermarket front bumper. I think original optional side skirt or late model side skirt. It seems like it's the original one. And a uh, set of wheels that I don't recognize. Hoop rear spoiler. I remember when these were the coolest thing ever. The hoop rear spoiler. Everybody wanted one. You don't see it too much these days anymore though. Okay, so let's see. What do we know about this one? And I'll leave it up because... I'll leave up the picture because it's nice to look at. So this is a 1999, so it's a late model, RZ. RZ is the top trim level. So there's uh, the twin turbos have the RZ or the RZS, and then the uh, non-turbo ones are the uh, SZ or SZR. Kind of confusing. High mileage on this one, and this is part of the reason why I picked this one. High mileage, the body looks good, and there aren't too many concerning things here. And it's original red, which is a pretty rare color to find in good condition, because red tends to fade faster than any other paint color, it seems. It does have a little bit of fade on it. You can see at the top there, it says here that it does. But with the high mileage and a good condition, you can usually get a pretty good value for your car. If you go really low mileage, you pay for a lot. But if you go high mileage, good condition, you can usually get pretty good value. And I think that's what this car will represent. I still think it's going to be expensive because it looks great and I just think that Supras, you can never get them for really cheap these days. Uh, not a lot to say about this one. I think we're going to see this one go for about 1.7 million yen. Okay, and on to the last one from Matthew Cho. Matthew, I think this is your first time uh, getting onto the video, so welcome. And you delivered one that I kind of owned before but didn't. I used to own this generation of Legacy as my car. Some of you long-term viewers know that. This one here is the Blitzen version of the Legacy, which is kind of cool because, number one, it's the only way you can get a red Legacy, and it looks really good in red. Number two, these are uh, rare. I think they only made 2,000 of them, the Blitzen version. And so the Blitzen version was Subaru, getting in bed with Porsche, but not completely, only like one foot and an elbow in bed, because all Porsche did was design the wheels, design the rear bumper and front bumper, the grill, and then put a brushed aluminum look on this piece here. But it's still plastic, it's not real brushed aluminum. They came in five speed or auto, but um, the auto has a for the Blitzen model of the auto, you get a different center differential or something, but mostly the car is the same as the regular ones, the regular legacies, except for the looks of it. Now, most of the Blitzens are sedans. The wagons are really quite rare. Rarely, rarely ever come up. I don't like the bumpers, but I understand that some people do like the bumpers. It's not like, oh my gosh, get that car out of my face kind of look, but it is something that I don't really like that much, the split bumper there. And the, especially the front one looks a little bit nerdy to me. I could live with it if I needed to. I like the rest of the car. Love the color. Uh, I really like this generation of Legacy. They come with the twin turbo EJ20 engine, 280 horsepower. I think 260 in the automatic one. This is an auction grade four with an interior B. Pretty high mileage at 143,998. What does it have? A Navi reverse camera, Momo steering wheel. That's the stock Momo steering wheel. Stock seats. There's shift yourself buttons on here. I think that was collaboration with Porsche. Actually, they used information from Porsche and the Tiptronic. Oh, and let me mention, because someone's going to mention it, it wasn't 
it's a subsidiary of Porsche that did the design for this called Porsche Design. So it's not the part of the company that makes the cars. It's the part of it that does like design-ish stuff. I don't know because I haven't looked into it that much, but they are two separate entities. And so no, no mechanical stuff that I know of was done by Porsche except for this partnership with Tiptronic, which is an exclusive to the Blitzen version. As far as I know, someone else, check that before you uh, mention that to someone else. Otherwise, you might be wrong. Okay, uh, roof rails paint peeling. This was on mine too. There's these front blocks that are made out of plastic and they peel. Just those. Pretty easy to fix. Rear garnish cracked and wiper has been removed. And a rear garnish? What the heck is that? Oh, oh, I know. So the taillights are weird. They have two taillights here and then they have a plastic part in between that says legacy on it. That's the rear garnish. So that's cracked. And that would be exclusive to the Blitzen one, I believe, that piece because usually it's like a plastic that's semi-translucent and you can see the letters underneath the plastic. Okay, wheels scratched, various scratches and dents. Body seems to be in pretty good condition with some minor scratches on the front. Sometimes you see the Blitzen sell for more than the typical Legacies. I think that people don't really care for these that much, not enough to put an awful lot of value. It's not the kind of car that people jump on as soon as they see or wait forever to, for them to come up. And so I don't think that we'll see the price that much more expensive than a typical one in this condition. Starts at 68,000 yen. I wouldn't be surprised if there's no reserve on this car because legacies can sell for that cheap. I'm going to guess on this one that it'll go for about 120,000 yen, which is a little bit high for the mileage, but someone might be paying higher for the Blitzen. All right, and so that's it. If you guys want to have your cars featured, you can have access to this auction tool. It is free of charge. Go to our Facebook page and you can figure out how to do it from there. Every week we do this and the day before we'll put up, put up a post and then you just write in the comments with the links and a little bit of information about the car. So that's going to be it for this video. Thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you next week.